Yeah. All right, so. Where was I? Yeah, you was. You said about uh, if people are really here for the right reasons, then it won't matter. I. Hey, come on in, little Ricky. I heard a cough. Yeah. I know you ever seen me on camera. No, actually, I didn't. I seen you through the crevice of the door. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at Spiffy, brother. Glad to have you. Come on in. I can't let my guy down. I told him that I'd do this. We're going to get this and see what's up. All right. Well, you know, there's a reason there's not any more of us here than just us right here. And, uh, well, you got to bless who's here. Huh? You got to bless who's here. Amen. Yep, yep. Well, like uh, Carol was saying, it's a uh, kind of a test run, maybe the Lord is. Uh, that's why he's, he's doing it this way, and that's just fine with me, because I'm not so nervous in front of y'all. Y'all know me. There's <laughs> 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 ones coming in I ain't never seen before that make me nervous. But yeah, like Carol was saying yesterday, she said, uh, in terms of this worship music and the way it's going to go today, if people are here for the right reasons to actually truly worship the Lord, then it ain't going to matter. With that, I want to take us in prayer. Um, if I could, I'd like to ask everybody to stand this morning uh, in uh, reverence of the Lord. Uh, yeah, and uh, just so I'm in the practice of saying so, anybody that can't stand, you know, uh, by all, no, you don't, no, no. If you want to, okay. But anybody that, that is not able to stand, just bow your heads with me in reverence of the Lord. Brother, I'm glad to see that, man. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Father God, we love you so much. We come to you this beautiful morning. We wholehearted and humbly, Lord, letting all pride go. And from our hearts, Lord, truly ask you to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us in the shed blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for this day, Lord, and I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for choosing me of all wretched people in this world, using me, choosing me for your calling to minister to people. And thank you for every incident throughout the years of my life, all the ones I thought I could never get through, all the ones that I didn't want to go through at the time, but I wouldn't give back for nothing in the world now because it was each and every one of them horribly seeming tragic seeming incidents that got me to where I'm at. Lord, I ask you, or I thank you, even I've asked you so many times already. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to, your Holy Spirit is going to talk to me, through me, minister to these people through me, not one word being from my mouth, Lord, coming from me in the name of Jesus. Not one action, not one deed this day that comes from me. Lord, do not let it be from me in Jesus' name. Your will be done. We love you so much. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all can be seated. Right now, I'm going to uh, turn this light off here. I'm going to dim that back light and uh, give it just a moment here. this set. There we go. I'm going to dim that light there. There we go. I'm going to play our introduction to you for everybody. ever pondered the power of transformation? Imagine a world where the outcasts, the forgotten, those labeled as outlaws, are not just abandoned, but instead given a chance to reform, to change, to become better versions of themselves. This is the world that Outlaw Reform Ministries Incorporated is tirelessly working to create. 
Outlaw Reform Ministries Incorporated is not just reforming outlaws in regards to natural laws, but also the outlaws from Christ, the ones who are running from God himself. Outlaw Reform Ministries is reforming societies, changing perceptions, and creating a world where everyone gets a chance to change, to grow, to become the best version of themselves through Christ. But this transformation, this reformation, it's not possible without you. You who believe in second chances. You who understand the power of transformation. You who see the potential in every outlaw. Support the work of Outlaw Reform Ministries Incorporated. Because every outlaw deserves a chance to transform, to reform, to become a better version of themselves through Christ, and to go on to helping to transform the lives of other outlaws as well. Join the mission. Support the transformation. Stand with Outlaw Reform Ministries Incorporated. Because together we can create a world where every outlaw gets a chance to reform. <laughs>
Holy Father. We've come to adore you. We've come to worship you. We've come to glorify the name of your Holy Son, Jesus, tonight. Wonderful Holy Spirit, you're the only one who can do this. And we know that. Fill this house with your glory tonight. That we would know you and love you. Oh. That we would know you and love you, Lord. Would you make that your prayer right now? That we would know you and love you, Jesus. church there is a volunteer uh, list both on the pegboard back here at the right at the entry door uh, as well as extra copies on the table if you want to take them home with you there are sign up sheets on the back table if you want to volunteer for any of the positions the shirts and the hat that you see hanging on the back wall if you want to help contribute uh, to this ministry uh, you can also find the order forms for them and of a donation of any size, whatever a dollar or hundred dollars, it does not matter. I uh, just fill out the order form, and I didn't have the tithe envelopes at that point when I uh, put that order form together. So at the bottom it says just wrap your money up in the order form. Well, you can still do that, or you can put it, the order form and the money in a tithe envelope, which you can also find more envelopes on the side of the tithe box back here, and you can drop that in that box. Um, I want to uh, I want to take us back into prayer for just a brief moment. And well, I want to explain something about worship first. Uh, so I'm I'm sure that most of you noticed that I came and sat right in the middle, in the third row there, 
and I did that for a reason. I want this church to understand that I'm no better than anyone out here. I'm just as much a part of this congregation as any one of y'all are. When I'm up here preaching or teaching or whatever you, the Holy Spirit wants to call it on any particular Sunday, it's not really me, but rather the Holy Spirit through me. So unless the Holy Spirit is utilizing me as a tool in that moment, why should I be up here? That's just the way I feel. I feel like I should be out there with y'all. So that's why I came and sat with y'all or stood with y'all during worship. Now, Lord, I just want to go back into prayer for a brief moment, and I want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for the anointed time that we spent in worship, and I do want to ask that uh, you bring in some musicians to help us with this that are really anointed under, under the presence of your Holy Spirit, Lord, so that we can really, really send you praise and worship so up to you, Lord, that they may be a sweet aroma to your nostrils and a sweet sound to your ears. Because it is our truest desire, Lord. It is my truest desire to glorify you and to make it loud and proud that all the world where all those who pass by this church may hear and say, man, I gotta give me some of that. I gotta give you some of that, that being drunk, that being drunk on your Holy Spirit, Lord. You are using me, Lord, and you're using everybody in this church, Lord, one way or another, in one capacity or another. And each and every one of us I know says thank you from the bottom of our hearts for choosing us of all people to fulfill your calling to be a part of what you are calling us to do. And I just thank you, Lord, that you have taken total control of me and used me in the best way you see fit. Jesus Christ, mighty name we pray. Amen. And I mean, now, folks, I spent a couple weeks preparing a sermon. And I redid that sermon four times. And I thought I finally had it. And I thought, yep, yeah, this is it. But just like I thought would happen, <laughs> I'm not going to do that sermon. <laughs> I'm going to actually pull this stool up here. And I think y'all can hear me. I think y'all can hear me without that mic, can't you? Y'all can hear me without the mic. What I'm going to do, anybody that's got your Bibles with you, uh, or if you don't have your Bibles, you can also use your phone. I uh, just Google uh, Ephesians chapter 6, KJV. And I want to let you all know that unless I ever state otherwise, I always preach from the KJV or teach. I, I prefer teaching. I don't know why preaching comes out of my mouth sometimes, but I prefer teaching because that's really what it is. So if we can just turn over now to Ephesians chapter 6. things differently than an average church and I'm supposed to encourage 
congregation participation. Is there anybody in the congregation that would like to read uh, this passage for us? If not, that's okay. I'll read it. Um, is there anybody that would like to? What verses? Uh, verse 10 through 18. 10 through 18. Yes, sir. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For he wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And I'm going to stop you right there for a moment. Verse 12. <clears throat> this is what I want us to focus on at this particular moment. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. So, each and every one of us in here, we've had somebody really do us wrong over the time. At some point in our life, somebody has done something so horrific that we can't forgive them. It's just we cannot forgive them. And I bet that I probably told it near to everybody in this congregation today, if not everybody. That we got to learn why we forgive them. Through knowing who the enemy is. And then once we learn who the enemy is, then we're going to learn who love is. Hence that paper. And, and that paper on these chairs here is for each and every one of you to take home with you. Alright? It's real simple. Know your enemy and you would know your love. There's a couple of scriptures that go with it. And so I was sitting here about oh, two and a half, about two and a half years ago. Sitting there talking to my mother in the house. And I just stopped mid-sentence. It was like a light bulb came on in my head instantly. And I just stopped mid-sentence. My mouth dropped wide open. I heard this passage of scripture. I couldn't tell you all how many times. Thought I understood it. But I didn't. I still had hatred and bitterness in my heart. There was people I couldn't forgive. But when I had that light bulb moment, that light switch moment, Instantly, I understood what this verse 12 meant. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, the rulers of darkness, and so on. Okay, so what's this mean? Can anybody, does anybody have any idea what this means? But who is our enemy? Amen. So, I got a tool bag sitting over there. And in that tool bag is a hammer. Now, for the sake of argument, let's just pretend that a hammer has a free will, has a mind and free will to choose. Okay? And it says, all right, Brian, you can use me. Okay? And once it <coughs> gave me that permission to use it, what I do with that hammer, that's on me, not the tool. Right? Would it be the tool's fault, the hammer's fault, if I went and used that hammer in a destructive, harmful manner to hurt people? It wouldn't be the hammer's fault, no. And we, as flesh and blood, are no different. Now, that hammer had a choice to make initially in whom to choose, rather, the good side or the bad, the good person or the bad person. No, the hammer, for the sake of argument, has a mind. It knows this person here is going to use me for good intentions. This person is going to use me for bad intentions. All right? So uh, when the hammer chooses to, to allow the one that's going to use it for bad intentions, that's the worst thing, the worst mistake it made. All right? We humans are no different. When we choose to uh, sin... We choose, in that moment, we have a choice. The lust of the flesh or Christ. The ways of Christ. The lust of the flesh can be anything. Why on food stamp application? Who's it going to hurt? You know? 
now, the Lord sees our hearts. And it's still a sin. Don't lie. Satan's is the father of lies. Okay? But we think in that moment, it's not going to hurt nobody. Nobody's ever going to know. That's neither here nor there. Rather, anybody in know because God knows. But in that moment, here's what you did. You chose to serve the lust of the flesh in that moment and relied on that food stamp application. Or when you cheated that washing machine. I so just had to throw that out there. I ain't talking to anybody. Yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't look at nobody. I <laughs> But uh, anyway, the Lord sees that. All right? So does Satan know. When we chose to serve the lust of the flesh in that moment, at that moment, we turned ourselves over to Satan to be used as a tool. Now, what Satan does with us from that point, he's the enemy. He's the one we got to blame. Not the person. The worst thing the person did, the worst thing they did was choosing whom to serve and whom, whom to allow themselves to be a tool to. So I hope that this uh, helps folks understand that that person that did that worst, horrible, vile thing to you, it wasn't them. Their biggest mistake was choosing them to serve. And as we become advanced in spiritual knowledge and in this understanding of who our true enemy is, we're going to learn who love is and what love is. And through that, we're going to be able to forgive even that worst of the worst of the worst person. Brother, are you still at that uh, passage? Well, uh, yeah. yeah you, you, you want to start at 13 and go ahead and finish for us? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> before, before you do, I, want to, I just want to say that the rest of this tells us the armor that we've been given as, as Christians and how to fight. Go ahead, brother. Wherefore, take to you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shroud with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. So, I'm not going to go any further in the teachings of that last part. What? The focus is, is verse 12, but the, the rest of that, 10 through 18, is to be studied by each of you. Let the hook sit down, pull that Bible out, pull it up on the phone, whatever, however you can get it, get it. And when you sit down before you read it, first we will do this, you ask the Lord, for forgiveness of your sins, cleanse you in, in the shed blood of his son Jesus Christ. You pray for wisdom and understanding as he tells us to do in his scriptures. And you ask him to help, he, you ask him, you ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in, in truly understanding with your heart what all this means and what each particular weapon of warfare is and how to use it. And I'm sure at some point down the road, the Lord will have me go deeper in on the weapons of warfare and how to use them. But that's not the focus for today. The focus for today is understanding who our enemy is. Now, let's turn over to 1 Corinthians 13, chapter 13.
And I'd like to encourage everybody uh, to actually bring Bibles. I don't have to. I just want to encourage everybody to bring Bibles. That's what the good Lord has uh, put them out here for, is for us to actually bring. But we are a society, and I'm, I'm guilty of it myself. Uh, we are a society where media is a tool stuff is taking over. And, and I, I appreciate you, and you're doing good. Rather you bring the Bibles in a hard copy form, or you have your phones out, of course, your phones on silent, and not paying attention to the notifications coming through your calls or any of that. But just simply having your phones out with the Bible app pulled up is still a Bible. Okay? And it always be a KJV unless. It's not working. Okay, well, that's why. Yeah, remind me, and I, we will get you both the Bible. I, I usually try to do that for everybody that comes through the board. I just. About it. Um, you want to read some more? Sure. All right. You want to, we're going to read verse 1 through 13. Read as much as you want, and I'll take over. All right. You said 1 through 13? Uh, verse 1 through 13. Okay. And this is <coughs> First Corinthians chapter 13. Correct. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity. I am become the surrounding sounding brass or a tinkering symbol. All right, hold on right there. Charity. Alright. Simply, charity in the King James Version will be in like the NIV version, it will actually say love. Charity is simply love. Alright. Now charity also means charitable acts, but in this passage, it is love. Alright? All right, you want to carry on? And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, though I have all faith, so that I can move, mount, move mountains, move mountains, and have no charity, I am nothing. So I'm going to stop the end right there. So in this second verse, it tells us that we can have these magnificent gifts, the gifts of prophecy, be able to understand, uh, have all, we can have faith, we can have the gift of prophecy, so on and so forth. We can have these magnificent gifts. But if we have not love, it doesn't matter. We can act, exercise these gifts to the fullest. But if we don't have love, we're exercising those gifts under a wicked pretense. Because let's face it, what is love? And we'll go deeper into that uh, later on. But love, in short, for right now, is God. God is love. Love is God. You can't have one without the other. And I, I love this part right here. And this is where things get uh, very controversial. Ready? Oh, hold on. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. I just misread the words. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, this is where things get real controversial. A person, a couple, that does not have Christ in their life, does not have God in their life, and they tell one another, I love you, do you know that every single time they say, I love you to one another, they're lying to each other? They don't believe that in, 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 in what they think is their heart. They really don't. They truly 100% believe that they love each other. But there's no possible way that they could love each other if they don't know love. Y'all see what I'm saying? I know, I know. <laughs> People, everybody will want to argue with me on that. Anyway, you want to carry out for us? And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, and profit, 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 and no profit in anything. Okay. <laughs> charity suffereth long in this kind. Charity, charity envieth not. Charity valueth not itself. It is not puffed up. Uh, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own. It is not easily, easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoice. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. The word all. And notice how many times, right in that one verse, verse 7, all. One, two, three, four. In that short little verse, little two line verse, four times it uses the word all. All things. In all things. Uh, Who's that? Trying to get up to read it. Uh, charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, there sh they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, 
they shall cease, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part what we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, when that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then, the, then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even, and also I am known. And now the light of faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Amen. So, verse 11, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away a child was plain. What this is talking about in that 11th verse is, well, yes, literally as a child, it's how things are, but also spiritually. So as a, as a child, just giving your life to Christ, or maybe you gave your life to Christ many years ago, and, and left it for years and years, and now you're coming back, and you haven't really learned the Bible, you know, you haven't really sought after his ways, you haven't, the Holy Spirit hasn't been allowed in to help teach and guide. Okay, well, you come back to it. Well, you're, you're reborn again. Okay. Well, when you get reborn in Christ, you're a new man. Now you're a baby in Christ, in the Spirit realm. Okay, and as we grow, we're going to begin to put away with those childish things because we're going to begin to actually focus on these words, and that's how we we'll become. Further advanced in the one to do what the scriptures tell us, which is to go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every living creature, which is a very interesting scripture. It says preach to every living creature. You know, does it say preach to every living human? Nope. It says preach to every living creature. Just something I find interesting. But I guarantee you, if I go out here and I start preaching to the cats and dogs, people are going to look at me a little weird. Look at the original word. I believe it, it means more like creation, like okay. all of creation. And I think that kind of refers to people. I don't think we should be preaching courses. <laughs> all right. I'll have, to, I'll have to do some studying on the original text on that. Then you know. So the vocal. Let me. You know what? There's two focal points that can be summed up in just a couple words. Does anybody know what the two focal points are? To this point. Love. 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 Okay, that's one of them. What's the first one? That's the second one. What's the first one? Right. Okay. It's possibly. Actually, if y'all are paying attention, it's right in front of your faces, literally. It's on the papers you're sitting on. Enemy? Uh-huh. Know who your enemy is, and then you will know who your love is. <laughs> so now I want to ask a couple of things. First off, First off, does anybody here have any testimonies that they'd like to share? No, okay. It's all right. Um, in future times, if you all uh, have any testimonies and you want to share them with the church, please feel free. Yes, sir. I'm glad to be alive. You're glad to be alive? Amen, brother. Amen. Yeah. The Lord's got a reason for Adam to still alive. Open that door again. Let it go. 
what that's what God is. He's love, and if we have God in us, then we are then we have love in us. And you know, scriptures tell us we'll know them by their fruits. It doesn't say we'll know them by the words they speak. No. People can speak all the words, say, make all the promises, say all the things they want to say that sound good. And they can get all the glory and the praise from people, you know, while they're saying them words. But in the end picture, it's their actions that tell the whole story. It's their actions that are actually preaching and teaching the folks. And I'm sure probably nobody actually, I, I highly doubt anybody's going to want to do this next thing, but I just feel like I'm supposed to ask it anyway. Does anybody have a song on their heart that they want to sing for us? Okay. Prayer requests. Anybody have prayer? I can sing, I would. <laughs> but uh, it would probably come out too good. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. So I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take down any prayer requests. But then before we do a prayer before we go into prayer, I would like for us all to just kind of Stand and I will take lead, sing an amazing grace. You just take the word right out of my mouth. And I would love for everybody to join in together. I hold on a second. Yeah, I meant to print out copies of it and I forgot it. I printed out copies of other songs, but I forgot the amazing grace one. I'm not sure where it is in songs, but it's his name the point. Amen. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, it actually tells us uh, it's some, somewhere there in Psalms to use uh, symbols and stuff like that. Yeah, being uh, like, imagine saying like tambourines and stuff like that. If anybody uh, wants to use a tambourine, I got them here, but, uh, you know. <laughs> but you do know, Joel, that you ain't got tambourine. Do what? If you just know, Joel, I don't think there's any tambourine. Well... You know, the Bible doesn't specify uh, that yeah, any song has right. to or has not has to. I don't really uh, know the whole, whole song, but I do it because my grandmother was, that was one of her favorites. Okay. And, and my aunt, her sister. Okay. Well, y'all are ready to sing this now. All right, well, let's do this. I mean, I'm stay at home because I can't sing. Oh, yeah, it's all right. Just do the best you can. That's all we're doing here. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, we're all family. Alright, you don't step in? Huh? Do y'all know the song? Well, but folks will know it as I begin to sing it. Maybe just long now. Because huh? I don't make a tool out of it. Well, not in any God's house. I don't make a tool out of it. Nah. I can't. Yeah. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that is singing.
person the whole theme song for about about the last five or six years. Y'all can have a seat for a few minutes. Uh, it's been my personal theme song for about the last five or six years, and it's just gotten stronger and stronger as my theme song as the Lord has carried me through this journey. And man, I tell you, whew, He has definitely showed me some amazing grace. I think, yes, sir. I want to give you great friends. Okay. instead of your will. That's, that's, that's exactly what we were trying to start with. Because if, last week I didn't know what we was going to be doing, where we was going to be, if we was even going to be able to be together through the rest of this journey. Amen. You know, when we sang Amazing Grace there a minute ago, even though we didn't quite make it all the way through, that sounded pretty good. That really sounded pretty good. I mean, yeah, you know, we all kind of had a, you know, it was all key a little bit, but overall that sounded pretty good. Yeah, and and hopefully somebody will remind me next time I'll have some, uh, some sheets printed off with the actual song on it. So you know, I guarantee you if everybody's looking at them sheets, we'll sound real good. We'll sing, sing some real good praises up to the Lord there. Anybody else got prayer requests? All right. Well, um, I'm going to pray over us. And then I'm going to dismiss us. After church, though, we're all family here. I'd love for everybody to stick around and fellowship. We've got homemade chocolate cake made by my mother back here. Sitting on the table, we, that in my face. <laughs> we've got we've got fresh hot coffee in the coffee vat at the back with cups. We got lots of food over here. We got water in the cooler. So I would love to encourage everybody to stick around and you know. All right, Lord Father God, we come to you one more time before we close this service. We just thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's been an amazing service overall. I appreciate you guiding me. And not one word being from me, Lord, but from you. Teach me the things, Lord, that I may or may not need to change about how I run this or how you run it through me. And I. Uh, we ask that we, as we carry through the rest of this day, Lord, that you be with us. But not only through the rest of this day, but through the rest of this week until we gather together as one body under one roof again. Lord, as for Tony and Carol and everybody in this room, myself included, Lord, Work on our consciences from this point out. We fully submit ourselves to you, Lord. We turn ourselves over to a, as a vessel for you to use, Lord, as a tool for you to use. We don't want it to be about us anymore. We're tired of fighting this life, thinking we can do everything on our own, thinking we know best. <clears throat> no, we're tired of that, Lord. We know you know best. Help us to remember that, though. And especially help us to remember it in that heat of the moment when we're about to make that life-altering decision. Take away any insecurities from us, Father, and help us to recognize that it is insecurities when they begin to flare up. And help us to recognize that that's the, the deceit and trickery of, of Satan and the evil one, the, the fallen angels. They'd love to get us bound by insecurities instead of truths. So 
stay on our conscience, even if it hurts, Lord, even if it hurts. Help us to do the right thing and fulfill your will no matter the cost. And yes, Lord, if it be your will, we pray for Tony and Carol that everything works out with this car that they're supposed to be getting, Lord, and that it turns out to be a good car, that it doesn't break down on them, that they're able to get it all legal and, and any repairs made that may need to be there, Lord. And Lord, I pray for that in your timing, when you feel that they're ready to be able to be on their own and have their own place again, that you provide it and provide a cheap place for them, something within their budget, but something nice too, Lord. Something nice. I think they deserve it. And until then, Lord, keep them of the heart to understanding that, there, that you have a reason for everything, even if they're with us for a little while longer than they anticipate. Help them to understand that there's a reason for that and to appreciate every moment of it. And as any person, people will drive home today, protect them on their drive and don't let anything bad happen. And just keep knocking on the doors of our hearts through your Holy Spirit, Lord, throughout the entire week. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we love you and we thank you. Amen. All right, folks, we're officially dismissed, and uh, yeah, let's stick around and have some coffee, have some cake, there's stuff, on, plenty of food on the table, water in the cooler, and uh, yeah. Sometimes, the, like where you plug it in, the wire and they'll get loose. You have to right? yeah, bust it over the solder. Right? I'm, I'm kind of wondering about that because that's kind of way it, it kind of happened because everything else was working. And, you know, but I don't know. I just can't get it to. Sometimes it's the, the ground. 
nothing goes around it, you know, and it's tight down here to be enough contact. So I actually contact the console to be able to play correctly, you know, and I'm always like, oh man, I got a little thinner knob in there, like I went to the polish shop many years ago. Uh, it's, it's really, really, like, juvenile setup, you know, like yeah. a grown man in there, like, playing, like, guitar here with a real guitar, but it makes me feel good, so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to play anything in there, but I get to see what it's supposed to be. I mean, I haven't, I haven't, I've, I've seen quite a few guitars, and I haven't ever seen one like that. It looks like it was made with some of that electricity stuff. Yeah, like they tried to put lightning bolts on it or whatever. It yeah, is. yeah. What, what, what they'll do is they'll cut it and they'll put solar on there and they'll put like a positive electrode over here and a negative one over there and let the stuff do it on the side. It's really dangerous. Yeah, it's really dangerous. You want to see how some fire do it. But that's what it looks like, man. It looks like one of those like lightning like huh. Of course, they might have just done it with a, a soldering iron, but, but man, it looks to me like they probably did it with some electricity. Yeah. Possibility. I mean, like yeah. Yeah, like maybe the electricity shot up through the metal, came over, and then back down. Well, maybe it was probably a solid piece when it did. Oh, okay. You know, and then cut down later. Huh? I imagine. Yeah. It looks good though. I just was curious. Yeah. Anyway, maybe I'll learn to play some when these days come over here and feel a wow and awe everybody. Yeah. 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 Yeah, hopefully they'll want to send us somebody with some musical uh, talent soon. There was two, three different sets of people that come along and said they was going to, they, they was excited, wanted to do it, never seen them again. We we'll talked for several hours, and then I've never seen them again. Well, it sounds pretty good, man. I mean, you know, the speakers just like getting along. I mean, you can hear it in the back, and you know, it's not too loud. It's not, you know, yeah. It sounds pretty good. Yeah, I have Tinkered with that, tinkered with it, tinkered with it, to try to get just a pair of dial and uh, trying to get the lighting right. Of course, I still need. I love the bulbs I got in that very back lamp, that ceiling lamp, and I think I want to go ahead and uh, put them in that middle one as well. And then this one, I'll just leave the regular ones, but I can adjust the lighting dim it down and the colors, and, and so I can create that that uh, Holy Spirit, you know, feel type of atmosphere that. We use those, uh, <coughs> they're in Phillips, they're in other walks, they go to 20, 30 minutes a piece. But you can change the green all you want to, black, dark, they got like presets where they like, get party where they like all the colors, and yeah. they look like it's a yeah. or something. You know. well, these they're, are, they're, they're awesome for these, man, they are, they're awesome for these. These was $32 for three bowls, <laughs> and I operated it from my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we do it's called a Liz, and yeah. Liz, yeah. 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 something like that. You can do it through Google, but the Wiz app's got more presets and stuff on it. Uh, sync. Sync. We, we use a different ICU system we use. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, this is uh, uh, so yeah, so a little thing where you can pick whatever color, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's sync. Okay. And then I click on that. And then uh, it's got the different settings. I can go here and hit that and then turn them all white like that there. And then do that. And I Choose my color, adjust the brightness over here. You know, we do with ours when we're going, we change them like we're uh -huh. You know, no, see, I tried to do that. I tried to do that uh, a couple days ago. Uh -huh. It wouldn't work. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Like, Does yours have to be, like, are you hooking up to? I'm thinking it's something to do with Bluetooth instead of Wi Fi. Or did you got Wi Fi here? This I do have Wi Fi here, yeah. Like, you're right, you're right. 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 Well, this right here where it says connecting, it failed to connect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that I just, yeah, couldn't do anything because it did. Uh, one thing that I'll have to especially like security systems, right. is your routers usually have like, they broadcast at 5 and 2.5 gigahertz, right? Uh, five, yeah. 5 is for close up, right? 2.5 is for basically everything else, right? Yeah. So if you've got like, say, an Xbox right by your TV and you got your thing, hook up to 5. 
fill out your rights and stuff like that, the security system took them up to 2.5, and you've got to name each one separately. Right. Huh. So you go into your router, you name more or less, like, let's say it's, you know, how long for the is Wi-Fi. You'll do the second one and call it how long for the is Wi-Fi 2.5, so you can specifically connect that one. Because if not, mine always connects to 5, and I can't do anything with the internet. Yeah. Okay. Like, and I'm really done, so it still takes me for a while. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we're the five all the time. Because when you hook up to the five, and I'm away from the house, I can't hear what she's doing. Yeah. Say that again? When you hook up to the five, and I'm away from the house, I can't hear what she's doing. Yeah. Yeah, I said 
there's something I've been looking at all the time. This is going to be like some of the wordplay that they use. You know, like when Jesus calls her a fox. Right? Okay. Um, um, like, you're, like, all of a sudden, you know, it was like a song. You know? And the fox was intimidated. You know? So, uh, I was doing the same thing. Yeah, he's like, okay, well, let's do some tests. 